Hello, welcome to topic number six in this OCR GCSE computing course. Uh, today we're looking at secondary storage um, in the continuing on our theme of hardware. So let's have a look at why secondary storage is needed in a, in a computer. So this um, these secondary storage devices are needed so there's a place to store data that needs to be retained when power is turned off and this makes it non-volatile memory. We looked at this um, in terms of volatility in um, the memory topic video and I'll just briefly explain it. So non-volatile memory basically means that everything stored in it is kept when power is turned off. So um, this is a picture of a hard disk which is a, a form of secondary storage which uses magnetic technology which we'll look at in a couple of slides. Um, but a lot of people, um, a lot of people who are ill-informed and it's our responsibility to correct them um, a lot of people think that because RAM is so fast, RAM is faster than every other um, secondary storage speed. Um, and people think that you can just store stuff in RAM. You can store your files in RAM, store all your work on RAM. And it doesn't work like that because RAM um, has a small capacity. But more importantly, RAM loses everything stored in it when power is turned off. It's very volatile. It is volatile, which means that everything stored in it is lost when power is turned off. And generally, it has a smaller capacity to a hard disk because it's easier um sorry because in RAM it's harder to maintain the speed with lots of with lots of data which means hard drives have huge amounts of space so maybe a terabyte two terabytes three terabytes RAM maybe only has eight gigabytes which is a, is a huge difference um so when data is input in the computer usually via an input device is processed and then either immediately outputted or stored in the secondary storage as we looked at in the um, input output devices video um, so we've got to look at five definitions all to do this. A lot of them we use in common English, but it's important to just make sure we're specific to storage devices. So capacity is simply how much data can be stored in the storage device. Pretty simple. Speed is how quickly the data can be written, which means stored, and read, which means accessed. So we often, we often talk about a read-write time, and if I show you this, it makes more sense. So here are two pictures of two different hard drives, one of which is at is priced at 174 pounds that's how i found it on amazon 174 pounds which is a lot for a hard drive but what you get with this hard drive is a very fast read write time as i as i mentioned here which means it stores data quickly it reads data quickly so you whenever you store stuff and access stuff on your, on your computer it will be very fast um, but it is expensive so for this hard drive with the same capacity you can see that you pay um a much less much cheaper price you pay 50 pounds only but the read write time is a lot slower. So you can see that actually the price more than three times as much gets you only just slightly less than double the speed, which is a compromise. A lot of the stuff when you pick hardware for your computer, it's all about compromises. And you may be asked a question um, to compare. So it may give you a scenario where someone wants to say they back up all their files and then maybe you'd want to invest in a better hard drive, but then it's all about comparing and that's quite a good question to know as long as you understand these key terms so another one is portability and this is simply how portable the device is but that means whether or not the device can be taken with you and how easily it can be taken with you so um, two examples of uh, secondary storage devices one of which is an external hard drive and one of which or, or lots of CDs so um, as you can see this external hard drive has sort of a casing to it has only one wire um, which makes it more durable you can literally put it in your pocket I have an external hard drive I have a little case for it really simple really easy to take with you it's not that big but as big as my hand take it with me and see these are similar you slide them in I guess you could just put them in your bag and once you cover them up and you're good to go whereas a large hard disk you can't really take with you um, also you want to look at durability when you come to looking at secondary storage devices and that's how easily the device withstands press uh, stress so hard disks are renowned for breaking quite easily um, a CD is not that durable because it can be scratched quite easily um, and reliability is how dependable the device is um, so here's a graph of the survival rate of three different brands of hard drives by people at Backblaze they obviously tested lots and lots of hard drives from these three companies and this scares me a little bit because you can see even after a couple of months what maybe two or three percent of these hard drives fail and for me, I have all my pictures, all my music, all my documents on my hard drive, which is so important you back it up um, because your hard drives can fail. You can have a hard drive crash, which when your um, electromagnet arm 
hits into your thing often um, this is caused by turning your computer off of the, of the switch so when I, I do is sometimes when you can't be bothered to turn it off properly you just turn it off at the plug and it can cause a hard drive crash so let's have a look at three different technologies that modern tech uh, modern uh, secondary storage devices use first of which is optical so on optical discs um, binary data is stored as variations of height on the surface so we looked at possibly even the first video of this whole series um, that everything on a computer is represented with binary so binary data is stored as variations of height binary being 0 and 1 so if you look at very closely at an optical disc the you see little dots and this is because when light is shined from an optical drive, the light that hits a pit, which is simply a dent, reflects differently to a land, a flat spot. And this allows the drive to detect the differences and read the data. And the data is written with simply a laser burning the pit into the storage medium. So if we have a hard disk here, obviously the light gets reflected down. And if there's just a flat bit, it will get reflected straight back up. And that will be represented, uh, represented by a 1. Um, we can see here if we've got a little dent it gets reflected away that's simple physics and the, the um, optical drive won't uh, recognize that it's back and so it will represent it with a zero and off um, and CDs, DVDs, Blu-ray discs they're all examples of optical storage um, we're going to look at magnetic storage now this is what most in your computer most commonly is used in your hard disk um, and these devices you'd use read and write heads that contain electromagnets and a small part of the storage surface is even magnetized which represents one or demagnetized which represents the binary digit zero and the heads control this and read what state they're in so um, two examples of this like I just mentioned your hard disk this has this read write arm and the date the platter it's called a platter spins and this will magnetize some bits of it demagnetize some of it and it can it, electromagnet it will um, read effectively what state it's in and relay that to the processor. Um, here is an example very outdated these are from like the 1980s 1990s cassettes you may not even see them anymore um, and this is magnetic tape in the cassettes and so when they're uh, when data is stored in them, the magnetic tape, tape um, contains the magnetised and demagnetised parts and when you put it in a cassette player it will read which parts are magnetised and which parts are not. Okay, let's finally look at solid state technology and this is for the latest, I mean again this has been around from the 1970s onwards but recently you, you may have heard of it more and it's a form of flash memory but it's non-mechanical um, unlike magnetic and optical, these are both mechanical um, and mechanic, non mechanical just means there's no moving parts. And they consist of circuits with complex logic gates. We looked at binary logic and logic gates in a couple of videos ago. And these logic gates retain the data when they're turned off, which is very important. It's important that they're non volatile, which means that your data is stored when they're turned off, otherwise, all your stuff gets lost. An example of this is a SSD, solid state drive, which are hard drives, but um, and they're also very fast. It's important to mention that flash memory have extremely high speeds. Um, but their capacities are generally lower than that of magnetic and optical drives um, and also a USB thumb drive or flash drive is also solid state flash memory so um, I just before I made this video I, I tend to make these powerpoints a while a while before I record it and um, I just added this to make sure I'm, I'm clearing everything up so if we look at um, if we relate these technologies to our definitions generally per unit optical drives have a smaller capacity um, they're also quite reliable and durable but can be easily damaged so CDs get scratched quite a lot very frustrating when your CDs, DVDs, games get scratched also very portable it's easy to transport and carry you know, a couple of CDs um, magnetic for what I wrote for this they have a large capacity by far the largest of all of these for the same, same amount of money um, they're usually quite reliable but not that durable they can be easily broken and they're generally not that portable with maybe a cassette you could say it's quite portable but would you really use it not really an external hard drive is quite portable but not so much as a CD or a flash drive um, for solid state I wrote for very fast but expensive at the moment the, the price is, is very high for the amount of storage you actually get they are reliable um, and they're more durable and quieter um, don't produce produce as much heat etc um, but they do have a smaller capacity than magnet for the same amount of money and for port they are quite portable especially the USB drives so um, a lot of information in this video uh, maybe you want to go over it hopefully I've covered everything um, so yeah thanks a lot for watching